Our only announcement is our only announcement is to join us on the lawn Sunday morning, Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. And if you don't feel safe or comfortable doing that, you can catch us on Zoom. So either way, we hope you will join us for the glorious service of the resurrection of our Lord on Sunday morning at 10. Speaking of glorious, Jason, prelude. Our call to worship, we gather in remembrance of Jesus' last meal with his disciples. We gather to remember how much Jesus loved them and us. We gather to acknowledge our kinship with the disciples who forsook Jesus. We gather to acknowledge the God who did not. Let us worship our God who sustained Jesus in his life and death and who sustains us as well. Please join me in the unison invocation. O oh, merciful God, in Jesus you experience the agony of being betrayed by those who had promised to be faithful. Deliver us from the temptation to serve you with such shallow faith. Teach us that we cannot divide our loyalties between you and the world without cheapening your love. Teach us as well to serve you and love you even as your son showed us how. In his name, we gather and pray, amen. Our opening hymn is Go to Dark Gethsemane, hymn number 97.
please join me in the prayer of confession. A brief moment of silence to consider what we have not done that we should, what we should that we should not, and things we are not aware that we have omitted. Holy God, holy God, and holy good, we confess that we don't know how to confess. For we have admitted sins we haven't committed, prayed prayers so broad and vague, they've covered everything and caused us to blush at nothing. We have felt guilty about the wrong things, like breathing or just being alive or feeling inferior. We felt innocent about real wrongs we have done or real good we have not done. When we have asked your forgiveness for real sins, we must admit that we have no intention of giving them up because we are so fond of them. Do not forgive us for wondering why our unrepentant confessions have left us unheeded. Do forgive what each of us can honestly bring to you that is real and really grieved. Amen. Christ endured betrayal for our sins. Christ endured trial for our sins. Christ endured crucifixion for our sins. Christ died for our sins. By his love, we are forgiven. Now you have to bear with me while I get this going.
to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified? Our gospel reading is from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17, and then verses 31 through 35. Now, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I do to you, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I give you an example that you should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Down to verse 31. Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, 
God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. So you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Do you know what I have done? After Jesus had washed their feet, John says, he returned to the table and he said, do you know what I have done to you? Do you know? Jesus' question echoes through that upper room among the tingling, clean, sweet smelling feet of the disciples, but it echoes down the centuries to you and to me as well. Do you know? Do we know? We know a lot about a lot of things. We know a lot about math, two and two are four. The square root of 64 is eight. We know a lot about science. The world is round. We know something about technology and how to get on Zoom. We know more and more about medicine. We know a lot. But do we know what Jesus has done? Do we? Do we know? We know he did something important. Oh, we wouldn't be here 2,000 years later if he hadn't. Something really important happened in that upper room. But do we know? Jesus washed the feet of the disciple who would betray him, the disciple who would deny him, the disciples who would fall asleep when he asked them to stay with them for prayer. Jesus asks them, do you know, and they didn't. He asks us that same question, and we don't really understand any more than they do. What has Jesus done for them and for us? What Jesus has done is to love them and love us as we are. Jesus washed the feet of the unclean. God's love doesn't wait till we've cleaned ourselves up, fixed ourselves, and gotten ourselves in good shape. God's love starts where we are, dirty feet and all. We don't have to believe the right doctrine. We don't have to be members of the right congregation. We don't have to have the right clothes or the right sexual orientation or the right gender. Jesus loves us as we are. Jesus looks at the disciples and he looks at us and he says, I love you. And I even love your dirty, smelly feet. <laughs> the church, oh, the church has turned it around. We've made it all about worthiness. We've made it all about earning. We've made it all about being baptized in the right church and doing the right thing and saying and wearing it. We've made it about what we do. But that's not what Jesus said. Do you know what I've done? I have loved you unconditionally. Dirty feet and all, just as you are. You don't have to clean your own feet to be acceptable, Jesus says. You're acceptable, dirty feet and all. The cleanliness management program of the church began about 20 minutes after Jesus died. <laughs> and that program has mandated that we feel shame and guilt for who we are, for traveling the journey of life and getting our feet dirty. 
that cleanliness management program of the church is not what Jesus is about. Jesus isn't about us cleaning ourselves up. Jesus is about loving us as we are. The point is not that we have to be worthy. It's the exact opposite. We're not worthy. We'll never be worthy of Jesus' love. And he loves us anyway. Do you know what I've done? Jesus says, I have loved you as you are. Now, the Gospel of John doesn't mention bread or wine. There's no communion in the Gospel of John. It doesn't speak of it at all. All we have in John is the washing of the feet. Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, wrapped a, a towel around himself, poured water into a basin, and then knelt down. And he washed foot after dirty foot. I can only imagine the disciples looking at one another amazed. And we do too. And then Jesus says to them, do you know? Do you know what I've done? The disciples were confused. And I bet if we're honest, we are too. They didn't understand. Do we? Do we really? Jesus was not about a religion of shame or worthiness. Jesus doesn't want us to blame ourselves or, or others. He doesn't want us to point fingers. He reminds us that dirt is the inevitable experience of the ambulatory. Our feet get dirty journeying through life. But Jesus tells us that the dirt comes off easily at Jesus' table. The dirt comes right off if we accept Jesus' love. Yet we persist in calling ourselves and others unworthy. We persist in trying to make it about earning our way into God's love. Do you know what I've done, Jesus said? Jesus shows us clearly, clearly that we don't do anything to deserve his love. We simply accept it. Do you know? Do you know it? But then you heard Harry read that last part. Jesus says, do you know what I've done? I've loved you. Now, Jesus says, Go out and love others. Go out and love everybody else, dirty feet and all. <laughs> Not for what they wear or what they say or what they do or, or because they're dressed right or live in the right house or drive the right car. No. Jesus says, go out and love everybody, even their dirty feet. Jesus commands us in that last little part that Harry read in John. Jesus commands us to love others as he loved us. That means with our dirty feet, without strengths, without reservation. Do you understand? Do you know what he has done? Amen. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we really don't understand. We really don't. There are many of us with bread and wine in front of us who think we have to do something to deserve to take this communion, to celebrate this sacrament. Remind us, Jesus, that you showed us. You love us and accept us just as we are. But yet, God, remind us as well that as we celebrate this communion, this union with you and with others, remind us, holy God, that you ask us to love our sisters and brothers. 
those near and those far, those who we live with, those who will never meet around the world, those who drive big fancy cars, and those who walk through a river risking their lives to get to this country. Gracious God, remind us that you call us to love the folks whose Easter tables are overflowing with food on Sunday. And those who don't know what or if they'll have anything to eat. Remind us, God, that you ask us to love folks who look like we do and folks who look nothing or act nothing like us. Help us, God, through the power of this sacrament. Oh, God, take this wine, take this bread, fill them with your Holy Spirit that they might become for us spiritually nourishing so we can love, so we can serve, even as you showed us how. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Scripture tells us that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples as we ministering in his name, give it to you. And he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you, for you, because I love you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, that you might know your sins are forgiven, that you might know you are dearly loved, that you might know you don't have to prove yourself worthy and you don't have to live in shame. This cup is for you because I love you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, this evening, we pray for all who have a song they cannot sing. For all who have a burden they cannot bear. For all who live in chains they cannot break. For all who wander homeless and cannot return. For those who are sick and for those who tend them. For those who wait for loved ones and wait in vain. For those who live in hunger. For those who will not share their bread. For those who are misunderstood. And for those who misunderstand. For those who are captives. And for those who are captors. For those whose words of love are locked within their hearts and for those who yearn to hear those words. Have mercy upon them, O oh God. Have mercy upon us all. May the sacrament we have celebrated move us to share your love, your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, your goodness with all our sisters and brothers around the world. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we doing the Lord's Prayer? We can do the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is... O Sacred Head Now Wounded, number 98. a slide, Harry. service of the upper room. The first reading is a shadow of betrayal. Matthew 24, 20 through 25. Now when evening had come, he, Jesus, was reclining at the table with the 12 disciples. And as they were eating, he said, truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. And being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, surely not I, Lord. And he answered and said, he who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The son of man is to go just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He said to him, You have said it yourself. The Shadow of Desertion 
from Matthew 26, beginning at verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter answered and said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, that this very night, before a cock crows, you shall deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. The Shadow of the Agony of Soul in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 to 44. And he came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. And when he arrived at that place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. The Shadow of the Unshared Vigil from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 41. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death, remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The Shadow of Denial, Mark chapter 14, 66 to 72. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came and seeing Peter warming himself, 
she looked at him and said, you were with the Nazarene Jesus, but he denied it saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway and the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, again, the bystanders said to Peter, certainly you are one of them. You are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. The shadow of rejection, Luke 23, 13, 24. And Pilate summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said unto them, you brought this man to me as one who incites the people to rebellion. And behold, having examined him before you, I have found no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you made against him. No, nor has Herod, for he sent him back to us. And behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish him and release him. Now he was obliged to release to them at the feast one prisoner. And they cried out, all together saying, away with this man and release for us Barabbas. He was the one who had been thrown into prison for a certain insurrection made in the city and for murder. And Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept on calling out saying, crucify, crucify him. And he said to them the third time, why? What evil has this man done? I have found in him no guilt demanding death. I will therefore punish him and release him. But they were insistent with loud voices asking that he be crucified. And their voices began to prevail. And Pilate pronounced sentence that the demand should be granted. The Shadow of the Cross, Matthew, verse, chapter 27, verse 46 to 50. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, began saying, this man is calling for Elijah. And immediately, one of them ran and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. But the rest of them said, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit.
Jesus says, do you know, do you know what I have done for you? In a moment, I'll extinguish the Christ candle and the service will end. But Jesus calls you and me to service to our sisters and brothers around the world. Jesus loved and served us, dirty feet and all. That's what he calls us to do as well. On this Easter weekend, this Holy Thursday, this Monday, mandatum, commandment, love Thursday. That's what he calls us to do. And now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this night and forever. Amen.